Hey guys, it's Nick, and I got a tutorial for you today about how to make um, section drawings with V-Ray that are rendered. And what I mean by that is, is something like this. This is one of my students, um, Ian Spain. I had him um, in fall 2015, and he did these nice renderings of his apartment building uh, project of his of his like infield building. Um, and you can see that there there are these plans like in, in this project that he took these he had these plans and this big long section. And it's like a cut, you know, in the building, but the light's still coming in. And the what's important about this is that it's not like he just cut the model and then rendered it. There's a special way to use V-Ray and, uh, and programs like V-Ray that allows you to render it, um, but still kind of see it cut in half, uh, but but not like expose the open side, which would, which, would, which would ruin the way that you're representing the light, okay? So it's kind of like a, Something you can only really do like on a computer. Like you, you can never do this with a physical model. There's one of these kind of special cases. And again, it's a special technique so that like you can have a section, uh, like a section camera and get your lines and make 2D and all that stuff. But you can still see the way that, that the light would come into the space from the outside um, as if it were like simulated. And, uh, and that's really, really interesting. So I'm gonna show you the technique. It's actually pretty, it's pretty simple. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and go back. So if you remember back from my videos that I had with that kind of section pavilion, just had this little kind of funny like pavilion that I made. Um, so what I'm, what I'm gonna do is, um, I'm gonna go ahead and open up V-Ray for now and just get, get the basics kind of started. So I'm going to render, go ahead and turn on my interactive render. Uh, let's just see what we get. Get that, get that going here. It's gonna take a second. All right, so here we are. And I just had like the default kind of settings on it for now. I'm gonna go ahead and get a sun in there though. So go to environment and click on my sun or sky, pardon me. And just blew up the thing. I'm gonna use the uh, CIE clear because um, I don't want a lot of color in my model. And I'm not really gonna mess with the other effects. I'm gonna turn, I'm gonna make the sun invisible. I am gonna do that, okay. Um, go back to the camera, probably 13 EV, something like that, 13.5, and you can always kind of play with this later. Um, okay, so that's, that's generally what my settings are. And then for now, I'm going to go ahead and um, make it render a little bit faster by changing the, uh, the size. Don't worry about the sky. You can always knock that out with the alpha channel, so don't don't fret too much on that. Okay, so I got that going. Let me see. That's probably probably all that I need right now. And then go ahead and get your camera set up. So we're not trying to think about like where I want to cut this, you know. And and I think um I think for now I'm probably just going to cut it like from this side. This side or that side, because it's probably more interesting. And uh, so I just want to like look at the left, the left view, right? So if I look at it, now you can do this different ways. Like you can do it as a perspective, or you can do it flat. I tend to prefer, I, I, I tend to like it flat. But um, you can, if you want to make a perspective camera really easily, you just have that left camera, and then go ahead and go to properties and make it a perspective camera. Right, and then you've seen how we can do this in the video. We can go ahead and do, um, like, an adjust lens length and dolly. You know, if you want to play with that perspective, um, an easy thing to do too to get it to fill the screen is just to select everything, or basically just go zoom extents. You know, and then that's going to be a nice way to fill it. Then you can go ahead and play with the um, um, the camera settings, like the lens length. You know, if you want to adjust the the length or whatever, just don't don't overdo it if you do a perspective camera. I'll go ahead and do that since that's what that's what the example looks like. So once you've got a camera, right, you always want to go ahead and save save that camera. You know, and you might lose it, right? So my section always okay. So you got that. I'm gonna go ahead and resurrect my um, my renderer. So that's what that looks like. That's what our camera looks like. And you know, you can, you can, you can change the size and crop and whatever. Um, okay. So that's, that's the outside of the building. Um, but now we have to get it like a section. Okay. And what we're going to use to do that. 
Yeah, let me get that back. I don't want to. I don't want to lose that yet. Um, frame buffer. Okay. What I want to do is uh, go to V-Ray objects, and we're going to use the Clipper. The Clipper is a sort of like an imaginary plane. You can imagine it like a big uh, knife or a laser that's going to cut this thing. And so this is the Clipper, and the Clipper is like you know huge. And the idea of it is that when we position it, um, it will essentially trim. Um, away things that are in the camera view. So our view is mostly kind of a left view. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go to the front view and I'm going to rotate it. So rotate, oops. Center of rotation is going to be zero. I'm going to hold shift, click, and then hold shift and move it that way. And you can see immediately what the result of that is. Pretty slick. Uh, I'm going to go in and go to the top view now. So you can see this is the this is the edge, and you could you could do it in whatever you want. I'm gonna move it, so I'm just gonna move it. Like I just click it, and I'm gonna hold shift and drag, and wherever I let it go is wherever that trim is gonna end up. Like that's where that clip is. And see, so I actually put it on a mullion, which is a no no, because it ruins the. It's not a spatial, right? There we go. That's a little bit better. So you can see like I have this kind of clear story, you know, I can see the kind of gap between the door and the frame. You know, we'll leave it up to you to decide like where the best where the best section is. But that that is how we're gonna get that working. And then if we go into the sun options, you turn on the sun, we can see, you know, where the sunlight is. You know, if we start to adjust some of the parameters, you know, we can get some really interesting effects. Remember though, you want to dial it in according to the proper sun conditions. You know, is there kind of a particular time of year or time of day that you really want to illustrate, you know, for your audience? You can see like get some kind of beams of light kind of going, which are really interesting. And that's, I'm going to leave that up to you, you know, how you want to do that, but just Make sure that it's a proper sun angle. Make sure that you've got north correct. You know, make sure you're doing all those things. And then once you've got it dialed in, go ahead back to your um, asset editor and then play with that exposure value. You may need a higher or lower exposure, you know, depending upon the kind of scene that you're using. So that's pretty interesting, right? And then, so you know, when you're done, when you've got it all set up, go ahead and do your render like you would normally, right? You want the you want the you want the non-interactive um, like render, and then um, you know go ahead and output that, and then we're going to go ahead and proceed to the um, make two D lines. So like I, like I showed in Ian's example here, you know, he's got lines on top of the drawing. Um, so there's kind of a, 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 a like a method that I like to use to cut a section of a model. So we are going to actually cut the model now. So go ahead, you know, have your camera, you know, everything's all saved. Make sure you save a copy of it and everything. Um, and then once you've once you've kind of finished your V-Ray work, you're ready to kind of um, cut. So just make make note of where that plane is, right? And 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 what's cut and what's not. And then I'm going to go ahead and draw a box. Where that plane is in the start, and you don't have to be exact, exact, but you gotta be pretty, uh, you gotta be pretty close. So I'm gonna make a box that is bigger than the model, and then I'll go ahead and move. And the whole thing it just really wants to fill that space as much as you can. Okay, right. So there you go. We got this, and then I'm gonna go ahead and hide this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to split this. So you go split the objects I want to split. I'm going to select everything. So control A, but then I'm going to unselect the box. So just hit control and then click the box. The objects I want to split is everything. The splitter, the cutting object is the box. So click and then I'm going to hit enter and it's going to crunch for a bit. And it'll, it'll sometimes say things can't be split and that's fine. Things that are not inside the box will not be split. And what we're gonna do, so I'm gonna go ahead and hide the box. And I'm gonna go back up to my top view. And then I'm gonna go ahead 
And you could either select everything you know, that's inside of it and then invert. But I'm just basically gonna like, I'm gonna hide it or I'm gonna erase it or put it on a new layer or like whatever. But what that's gonna get me is the cut model, which will allow me to, um, you know, use Make 2D. Now, something that's you might notice is that now these things are open and that, that's probably not gonna work really well. It's gonna make it really difficult for us to get the poche. So a trick that I have for the poche is that we're gonna use split again. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to kind of fix this here. Um, hang on a minute. You don't, need to do, you don't need to do what I'm doing here, but I am gonna just eliminate the um, the other pieces. So I'm, just, I'm actually gonna erase them, but you don't need to do that. If you put them on a layer, you're fine. Okay, so now I'm back to my model and I'm gonna get that box back that I used. So make sure you keep that box and then I'm going to split the box by everything else. And this is kind of the trick. And then if I delete the box, I will have all these pieces. It's a good idea to go ahead and take them and separate them on to a new layer. Poche. And make the layer something recognizable just so that you can you can tell what's on the layer and what's not. Just in case you miss anything. The more if your model's more complex, there's other and you can just use a plane to cut it and then what's left over from the plane will usually be highlighted. This is kind of sloppy, but it gets it gets the idea. So there's my section pieces. And now if I go back to my camera, you can see I've got this. And now I can go ahead and say make 2D. Select everything. I'm gonna go ahead and maintain source layers, and then that will output my poche on the layer that I can use to easily work with it in Adobe Illustrator. And then basically like when you go when you so you have the rendering, you have your Adobe Illustrator lines or your or your or your AutoCAD lines, however you want to put them together in Illustrator and then you layer them together and you get something like this pretty much. And you know, you, you'll want to adjust the line weights and you know, and adjust the poche color, just make sure everything locks together. This is not a final rendering, I just did a quick screen capture. Sometimes I like to actually fade it a little bit because I want the lines to read more um, and I want the poche to read. So you're just kind of indicating the shadow. Like it's not, it's not like intended to be totally photorealistic. Um, you can experiment with that though. I mean, experiment with the, the lines you're using, experiment with your poche. You know, this is the effect that Ian got. Um, but it might be a nice way to kind of reveal, you know, where you have darker spaces or lighter spaces. In Ian's case, he was very interested in getting light from this area to illuminate, you know, spaces kind of beyond. Um, so that that's kind of a, that's something that he needed in his, uh, in his uh, like project. So anyway, um, and he did his in plan. And I think you guys can kind of understand how you would do that, right? Instead of cutting it from the side, you would actually just cut it from above. Um, so hopefully that's pretty self-explanatory, uh, but that's a nice technique to have under your belt. Um, can be really effective, again, at kind of showing the quality of the, uh, of the light in your space um, and uh, like how you guys are mitigating, you know, um, areas of, you know, too much sun or too much kind of, um, you know, like summer glare. So anyway, uh, cool. Hope that helps. I will uh, see you guys later. Thanks.